Good morning and welcome to Online Worship with Trinity. I'm Doc Giannis Horseman in my new position as Director of Inspired Worship. We're happy that you're here to worship with us today. If you'd like more information about our Trinity community, please use the information that you see on your screen. And if you have a prayer request or are in need of prayer, please contact us using the email prayer at trinitypbg.org. Today, we will be continuing our message series, Power and Light for Life, using scriptures from the book of Ephesians. Now, let us worship together with Come, Christians, Join to Sing. My wife Lauren and our four children are longtime members of Trinity United Methodist Church. Our world is going through a difficult time. Let us enter into a time of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for all your blessings in our lives. Let us take time to be still and listen for your voice. We pray for healing for those afflicted and for those who are caregivers or supporting caregivers. Lord, the isolation we feel can be paralyzing. It leaves us wondering how we can be your hands and feet when we're just stuck at home. Our usual toolbox has been stripped away. We seek your wisdom in adapting to our new world. We ask you that you put on our hearts those that we can reach out to with a phone call, text, or join in a video chat. We ask your spirit to encourage us to say yes to these things when it's so easy to just say no. We pray for those who have lost their livelihood that they'll be blessed with new opportunities. Lord, we would especially like to thank you for your grace. Even when you, we didn't know you, your grace touched our lives. We can't earn your grace. It's freely given to us. Lord, we ask for your peace and to strengthen us to extend your grace to others that we interact with interact with, that, our, that your love may shine through us. During his time on earth, Jesus often went into isolation to pray. Now many of us are presented with isolation, but it's difficult sometimes to come up with the right words. Jesus taught us these words to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. And all God's children said, Amen. chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. 
At one time, you were like a dead person because of the things that you did wrong and your offenses against God. You used to live like people of this world. You followed the rule of a destructive spiritual power. This is the spirit of disobedience to God's will that is now at work in persons whose lives are characterized by disobedience. At one time, you were like those persons. All of you used to do whatever felt good and whatever you thought you wanted so that you were children headed for punishment just like everyone else. However, God is rich in mercy. He brought us to life with Christ while we were dead as a result of those things that we did wrong. He did this because of the great love that he has for us. You are saved by God's grace. And God raises us up and seated us in the heavens with Christ Jesus. God did this to show future generations the greatness of his grace by the goodness that God has shown us in Christ Jesus. You are saved by God's grace because of your faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possessed. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. Instead, we are God's accomplishment, created in Christ Jesus to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A Christian motivational speaker by the name of Zig Ziglar was fond of saying, no one can go back and make a new start. However, anyone can start from now and make a brand new beginning. You know, that sounds an awful lot like Paul, God's messenger, when he was writing to Christians in the city of Ephesus. This is what he wrote. At one time, you were like a dead person. You used to live like people of this world. However, God is rich in mercy. He brought us to life with Christ, even while we were dead. Recently, I heard from a Celebrate Recovery friend from many years ago who told me that he was celebrating the 17th anniversary of his sobriety. 17 years of, quote, consciously choosing to commit all his life and will to Christ's care and control and doing it one day at a time. The first day of his sobriety was the day that his life increased in Christ. My friend had spent years, as Paul would say, living like a dead person, following the rule of a destructive spiritual power, sin-sick and self-absorbed, controlled by desires that never seemed to give direction or satisfaction, relapsing and remorseful more times than you would care to count. However, as Paul writes, God is rich in mercy and brought him to life with Christ. You are saved by God's grace, Paul writes. So the first thing I want you to hear this morning is the Christian life is grounded in God's grace. Recently, Heather Thompson Day wrote this about her daughter. Multiple times a day, my daughter will ask, Mommy, have I been good? And it always makes me sad because I resonate with it so much. I'm not sure where religion taught me that I have to be good in order to be loved. I know now I am loved because God is good. So when the Bible talks about the grace of God, it's talking about the gift of God's love that precedes our goodness. Grace is not something we earn like a paycheck or a trophy for our performance. Grace is not something we possess because we think we're a good person, or other people think we're a good person. Our lives are grounded in the goodness of God revealed in the life of Jesus Christ. Grace is the mercy of God for us while we were still sinners. Paul wrote this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. We have been ransomed through God's Son's blood. The Son's life poured out for us and we have forgiveness for our failures based on his overflowing grace. As the late Billy Graham used to say, the ground is level at the cross. The day you put aside all of your illusions of control in your life, all concerns about your past, all pretenses to be good, and surrender yourself into the care and control of God through Jesus Christ, that's the first day that your life will increase. In the conversation with my Celebrate Recovery friend, 
He told me he had just graduated with a master's degree in mental health counseling. Then he went on to say this to me, I've had to climb a mountain of struggle to get here, but the payoff is that the things I suffered when I was younger no longer define me or my path forward. So here's another thing about the Christian life and God's grace. God is more committed to your destiny than your desires. Your new life in Christ is not in here or back there. It's out here. It's in the future, the future that God intends for you. You don't have to be weighted down by past sins. There's forgiveness for you now. You don't have to be haunted by the wounds of your past. There's healing in your future. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 sums it up really nicely. We are God's accomplishment, created in Christ Jesus to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. The word translated into English as accomplishment can also be translated God's poetry. Think about that for a moment. When we surrender our lives over to the care and control of Christ, we allow God to use our lives to speak his beauty and wonder into the world. How's that for a cool destiny? God's Holy Spirit becomes the guardian and guide of our life and our future. Listen to the way Paul describes the work of the Holy Spirit. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. God raised us up and seated us in the heavens with Christ Jesus. And you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit because you believed in Christ. The Holy Spirit is the down payment on our inheritance, our future, which is applied toward our redemption as God's own people. So to say that the Holy Spirit is the guardian of our inheritance in Christ is to say that when we belong to Christ, we have a full share of his resurrection life. We see Jesus waiting for us beyond the grave. And however you imagine heaven to be, the Bible is clear that we will be with God and God will be with us. And we will see and experience God as the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in a beautiful community of love and intimacy of great depth. And we will be invited into that love and that intimacy, into the community of saints, with God, with one another. And to say that the Holy Spirit is our guide is to say that here on earth, in our day-to-day -day life, the Spirit is present and active within us and among us. We are invited to let the Spirit cultivate within us and develop among us a community sharing daily bread and daily praise to God. You see, what is true for us as individuals is also true for God's people, the church. No one can go back and make a brand new start. However, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Well, in his book, God is Closer Than You Think, John Ortberg writes that one day he had to fly to Edmonton, Canada to speak at a conference. There was no direct flight from San Francisco to Edmonton, so he took a connecting flight to Calgary, and he just had a small window of time open to make the connection then to Edmonton. He goes on to say, we were descending into Calgary you could see trees and cars when suddenly the plane lurched upward again. The captain comes on the intercom and says, bad weather just rolled in. I'm sorry, we can't land. We're going to have to divert the flight and land in another city. This was my immediate thought. God, what's going on? I'm not going to have time to go in another city and somehow get to Edmonton to speak. But soon, the captain spoke again. He said that the city to which they were being diverted was Edmonton. Ortberg says, my immediate thought was, God, way to go. Now I don't even have to go to Calgary. This is great. Well, we landed at the Edmonton airport, and the captain came on again. He said, we're just going to land here and refuel. 
Nobody can get off the plane. And then we're going to fly back to Calgary. We're going to have to sit on the tarmac here until the weather, weather clears over there. We estimate it'll take about three hours. My immediate thought was, God, what's going on? I'm sitting on the tarmac looking out at the city where I'm supposed to speak and I can't get off the plane. Ordberg says, I, I talked to the flight attendants, the pilots. I called my church to see if there was anybody who knew international law to get me off that plane. No go. He said, so what do you do when you're stuck on an airplane for three hours? Well, the flight attendants turned it into a happy hour, a three-hour happy hour, a three-hour free hour happy hour. He said, after an hour or two, I was the only person on the plane who still wanted to get off. And then I thought about a line from a Dallas Willard book where he wrote, at the beginning of each morning when I rise, I commit my day, even as I commit my entire life to the Lord's care. I've already placed God in charge. And so I no longer have to manage the weather, airplanes, or other people. That's a direct quote. And Orkberg thought, well, these are precisely the things right now that I can't control. And so there on that airplane, as happy hour progressed all around him, Ortberg surrendered it all into God's care and control. But wouldn't you know it, just a few minutes later, the captain said, we're going to let you off the airplane into this safe area. He said, you can stay there. It's a holding area, but don't leave. And so Ortberg got off of the plane, and it turned out that the airline official in that holding area had a daughter who was planning to attend the conference in Edmonton. Well, the captain explained my situation to him, and he spoke to a person in customs, and soon they were ushering me all by myself through international customs and cleared me to leave the airport. One cab ride later, and no one was more amazed to find me standing on the platform in Edmonton than me. What happens when we surrender ourselves into the care and control of God through Jesus Christ? Well, day to day, life is full of ups and downs. But here's what I know. Because of God's grace, your destiny is secure. It is an imperishable, inexhaustible inheritance of love and mercy and eternal life kept for you in heaven. And because of God's grace, you can daily commit your life into God's care and control, trusting that the Holy Spirit is God's gift to guard your life and to guide you day by day to become that poem, that story, that witness of beauty and wonder that God intends for you to be. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, Trinity community. This week, we're recognizing our vision and ministry, which is Cross Ministries. In a few moments, you'll get to see some highlights from some recent gleaning projects that we've done with Cross. If you would like to learn more about Cross Ministries and or get involved with some upcoming gleaning projects, please check out more information about the ministry on our website. And soon you'll see my email address on the screen, which you can contact me at if you'd like to participate in some projects. We hope that you enjoyed today's worship. Please take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to be notified when we upload a new video, click on the bell icon. If you'd like to learn more about Trinity's community, please feel free to contact us using the information you see on the screen. Trinity has been blessed and we thank everyone who has helped to support the ministries and missions of Trinity. Your gifts are allowing us to continue to minister both locally and abroad. If you would like to donate to Trinity, you can give online by using your debit or credit card or directly from your checking account. Go to trinitypbg.org forward slash give. You can also text to give. Text TRINITYPBG to 73256. You can always send in a check by mailing it to the church or by putting it in the mail slot in our office door. Thank you again for joining us this week. May you have a blessed week. See you again next week.